I am here today to talk to you about some misleading and controversial advertising, and I'm surrounded by some true heroes of many wars, some friends, and comrades in arms. Everyone here is a veteran, and everyone here has served this country, including myself. Now, during the course of the campaign for Alderman, a brochure was sent out talking about how Alderman Stone voted against veterans and senior citizens. And, and because of that, my constituents were told to vote against Alderman Stone. Of course, it, it was sent out and paid for by the new Chicago committee, which of course is a campaign committee for our mayor-elect, Rahm Emanuel. Now, to the best of my knowledge, Mr. Emanuel has never served in the service of his country, nor has my opponent, has she ever served in the, in the service of a, her country. I have, and so have all the people behind me. Some of the people behind me have been highly decorated for their service to their country. I can only tell you this, that the particular matter on which they cite uh, that I voted against veterans had absolutely nothing to do with veterans. It was the confirmation of a state or of statute which supposedly was made to bail out the CTA. It was using the real estate transfer tax as its funding source. I spoke against it in committee, and I spoke against it on the Florida Council. And the reason I voted against it is because it was using the real estate transfer tax. In the, buried in the bill was a clause that said free rides for veterans and seniors, which has absolutely nothing to do with the bill itself. And that was the basis for this infamous brochure. The reason I voted against it is I foresaw a problem with using the real estate transfer tax, as I foresaw a economic depression about to occur. I was right. The recession started less than a half a year later. And in Chicago alone, the real estate transfer act tax dropped more than $60 million. I have no idea how much it dropped state-wise. But obviously, the particular state statute failed to bail out the CTA, which now has to be bailed out again. And I'm sure they won't use the real estate transfer tax as the basis for the bailout. But that shows you the type of thinking that prevails, unfortunately, in our legislative body. And I certainly hope that our mayor-elect won't uh, use this type of thinking in his forthcoming term as mayor. Unfortunately, our mayor-elect has shown also some bad judgment and some of his other misleading statements. Here's another brochure the mayor-elect paid for, a brochure that uses it as its front cover 
a meter and says it's time to go and criticizes me because I voted for the meter lease ordinance. Had I to do it again today, I wouldn't have voted for the meter ordinance because all the facts were not known by us at the time we voted for the meter ordinance. But that's not the point. The point of my bringing this up is the fact that our mayor-elect has taken more than $400,000 just within the last six months from the same lobbyists and lawyers who represented the meter companies and misled us at the time we voted for the meter deal. So isn't that a little bit hypocritical for our mayor-elect to criticize me on a deal where he's taking money from the lobbyists and, and lawyers? I didn't take a dime from either one. So here's the mayor-elect misleading our public and the constituents of the 50th Ward and telling them to vote for, a, I guess, someone who he wants to be his puppet in the city council. I will be a puppet for nobody, and I will certainly not be a puppet uh, for the mayor-elect once I'm re-elected. Now, all of these facts that I've just given to you are of record. I have a list of contributors to the mayor-elect available for you to see, and they are all lobbyists and lawyers for the meter company. The reason that these veterans are here and the reason that these veterans are here today is to indicate their support of my, my candidacy for Alderman. I have always been an outspoken proponent for veteran affairs. It was Bernie Stone that introduced a resolution that was the first in the country to make Chicago the first to welcome home the Vietnam veterans who were so mistreated by the rest of this country when they returned from Vietnam. Chicago was the first city in the country that honored our Vietnam veterans after 10 years of mistreatment. And we honored our Vietnam veterans with a welcome home parade. And I'm proud to say that I was the one who introduced that that resolution that started that Viet Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans. The rest of the country then followed suit. But unfortunately, for 10 years, our Vietnam veterans were castigated and, and made to feel like they were second-class citizens. It's a, it's a terrible shame that someone who gave up so many years of his life, and in many cases, parts of his body for his country was treated so shamefully. Now, one of the people present here today was a hero of Vietnam, and he's my colleague in the city council. And I want Jim Balser to say a few words because he served in Vietnam. He's a, he's a very uh, humble person. He doesn't tell you that how he went up and down a hill carrying his fellow Marines, wounded Marines, up the hill to safety under enemy fire. But he did, and has been so recognized by his, by his grateful country. And I certainly am grateful to, to Jim Balser for his hero, her, heroic action. So if Jim, if you, you come forward. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Alderman Stone. I uh, first want to say that uh, Bernie Stone is a friend of mine. I've known Bernie Stone since the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, the parade that, that we had in downtown Chicago. And he was uh, right when he said he was on board, but it, it transcends Vietnam. It goes to World War II, Korea, Beirut. It goes to those that when the first Iraq War, the Persian Gulf War, it goes to those who fought in the, uh, the Iraq War now in Af Afghanistan. I have dealt with Bernie. Uh, I found him to be an honorable man, one of the most patriotic individuals I have known in the city council and in government. 
Uh, he has been there for disabled veterans. He has been there for the, for the, for the hospitalization of veterans. He has been there for the POWs and MIAs. He has been there uh, on a wide range of, of issues for the American flag. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here and stand with Bernie and say I, he is a friend, he is a colleague, he is a veteran, he is committed to the veteran community, he is committed to the, uh, to the United States military, he is committed to our ROTC, he is committed to the men and women that serve this country. And uh, as I said, I, I think he's one of the most patriotic individuals that I have known and I'm proud to support him. Again, I reiterate that as a veteran and as a senior citizen, I take objection to anyone who says that I am opposed to both veterans and senior citizens. And that is the reason that I asked my comrades in arms to join me today. And uh, I will now, ask, if you want, you can ask me any question you'd like to do, I'd like to ask. Yes? Well, that's his, that's his choice. But I, I, if he becomes involved, the one thing he shouldn't do is try and uh, cast aspersions on my name. Uh, I'm proud of my service to my country. I was I enlisted. I, I wasn't drafted. I was a veteran of World War II. And I really take objection to someone saying that I was opposed, I'm opposed to veterans and seniors. I'm also a senior. And how, how, how do, you, how do you, uh, you attack me on two counts where you don't, you don't fit that description, but I do? So what do you think this, what do you think this is about? I think very simply what it's about. He gets a twofer. Uh, he, he gets a puppet in the city council, and he has a, an ally in the state senate. After all, she's married to a state senator. You may have covered this already. I got to read all of it. What makes you think that Emmanuel is either behind this or Because he put out these, these vicious brochures. The new, Chicago, the new Chicago committee paid for a number of brochures which criticized my vote on a CTA bailout, which had absolutely nothing to do with veterans and seniors, but accused me of being against veterans and seniors. Uh, the bill had to do with a CTA bailout and had to do with using the real estate transfer tax for the bailout. It had nothing to do with veterans and seniors. But because there was a phrase in that or, or, well, a state statute, which the city council confirmed, that had a clause in it that said veterans and seniors will, will get free rides. Well, that wasn't the gist of the, of the resolution, the gist of the of the uh, statue was the fact that it was a bailout for the CTA. It occurred just before the recession, and I voted against it because I foresaw the recession. And he uses that to say that I'm against veterans and seniors, which is ridiculous. Did you oppose the idea of the free rides? No, it's, that was just, that was just a, 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 a side thing within the, in the ordinance. The, the issue in the ordinance was the, the use of the real estate transfer tax. Uh, what I indicated uh, the, is that the, in, in Chicago alone, the following year, 2008, the real estate transfer tax fell by $60 million. Statewide, I have no idea how much it fell. But in the meantime, that's the reason I opposed it. I foresaw that we were going to have a, a bad real estate market. How much traction do you think your automatic opponent is gaining by these uh, reports? Of my, my, my real belief is that she's losing because of these uh, vicious attacks by both Mayor Emanuel and SEIU. Uh, they've been using very negative campaigning, and I think it's working to their detriment rather than to their, to their uh, helping their campaign. But it's lies and misstatements, and therefore, uh, they have to be answered. Do you think as we, as we begin a historic mayoral, uh, mayor, uh, the first Jewish mayor, and we have these 
very contentious accusations being made um, against each other, two Jewish candidates. Is this a particularly difficult time, or do you think, were you surprised that things have gotten as heated and kind of ugly as, as they are as we sit on the edge of this historic well, uh, new mayor? Well, let me say this to you. The mayor has made it very clear, particularly to the Jewish community, he has told the Jewish community that he is not a Jewish mayor. He's a mayor who happens to be Jewish. Uh, he has said this to the Jewish community. Uh, I, on the other hand, am a Jewish alderman, and I made it that very clear over the 37 years that I've served. Uh, there's no question uh, what my religion is, and I, I don't make it a question. During the course of this election, uh, I stuck to issues the entire election. I've only struck, struck back during the last few weeks because, frankly, I got tired of being hit in the head. And I, and I, and I, am, I, I am really angry at this point, and particularly uh, because of all the uh, misstatements and uh, incorrect statements that are being made. Uh, the other misstatements uh, particularly by the SEIU, are ridiculous. Uh, the, the statements, of course, they did it, they did it uh, four years ago, and uh, people say that that was a close election. I really don't think it was as close as people say. Uh, but their negative campaigning four years ago resulted in my, w my winning four years ago. And I think the same thing will occur this time. Are you disappointed that you didn't get mayor elected? I'm not disappointed. I didn't expect it. I didn't get it. Uh, when Mayor Emanuel called me at the beginning of the campaign, I told him point blank that I would not support any mayoral uh, candidate. But I also told him I would work with uh, whoever uh, won the election. And I still intend to work with Mayor Emanuel. Uh, my background in financial affairs and city government is one that could be useful to him. Even though he has struck out at me, I will still be one who will cooperate and for the benefit of the city, uh, not for the benefit of Mayor Emanuel, but for the benefit of the city. Now, earlier this week, we had these hearings about money from, from your campaign coffers. Just to play devil's advocate, because that's what I have to do sometimes, is this perhaps to try and distract from that? Is this trying to... No, I have nothing to distract, no, nothing to, to try and distract. I was a witness in that case. That case has, has no has no bearing on myself. Uh, the fact is uh, that my former campaign manager admitted uh, that uh, I, I knew nothing about it, that he, uh, he decided to do it, and that he kept that fact from me, and that I knew nothing about it. Uh, he misled me. He admitted that fact. Uh, he, he testified before the state election board. He, he so stated, uh, he took, he, I trusted him, he took the checks and told me it was for my mailings and then diverted the checks uh, to this uh, so-called committee. So there's no question of what happened there. Uh, there I have nothing to distract. To distract. Uh, whatever happens to that committee, so be it. I couldn't care less because I'm not connected with it. And the record will, the record of the of the hearings will show that. Alderman, what efforts, if any, have have been made uh, to get you and Emmanuel together to maybe hash this out? None. I have. If Ms., if the mayor elect wishes to meet with me, I have always been ready to meet with him. In fact, I made an attempt to meet with him, and there was no there was no response to my attempt to meet with him. What did you? How did that occur? I, I called some of the people around him. I called Terry, Terry uh, the former alderman of 17th Ward. Terry. Kivinsky? No, ter the former alderman of 17th Ward. 17. 17. Who's now at, with uh, Rush? Terry Peterson. Terry Peterson. Uh, and uh, Terry didn't call me back quite quickly. <laughs> Why is this race so important? You've been there 37 years. You could obviously be taking it easy and not getting in a slugfest with this gal. Why, why, why is this important to you? 
It's important to me because I feel that my, my, my service to the city would not be complete unless I helped the new mayor. Uh, I, would, I would feel that I'm depriving the city of my, and the citizens of this city of my, uh, my experience. And it would be, it would be uh, a, a captain leaving the sinking ship. And frankly, Chicago is a sinking ship. Because of Emanuel? No, because of, because of this current situation that we're in. We're in terrible financial shape, and uh, we, have to, we have to bail out. Well, thank you very much, thank and you. I want to thank my, my colleagues and comrades in arms. I want to thank all of you of the media for coming out today, and I appreciate uh, your coming here. I don't need that. That time it was called the Army Air Force. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice you should have good luck Thank and you good very health much. Thank you so much. And come here and stay for many, many years. Thank you so much. It's important. It's important. Well, it's important to me to be here. <laughs> yeah, it is. Thank you. My mother. Mother. My mother, Edith. Hi, Edith. How are you? Ernie Stone, how are you? Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. I, I was just telling the other lady that... My mother was here too, a resident, but she passed away 15 years ago. I know you. He's a nice guy. Voting for you. Thank you so much. Because you serve the community Thank very you. well. Joe Abram. Hey Joe, how are you? I'm fine. So, so am I. I feel good. <laughs> I know nothing about your opponent. I know what you have done, but I don't thank, know what thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Kennedy. Good to <laughs> guy. Good job to all of you. Good job to you. Thank you. Thank you. Lady, you smile nicely. She's a nice lady. How are you? Hello, Leslie. Nice to see you.